let's start with a little thought experiment. Um, let's imagine that we're playing some kind of game in which there are two power supplies in front of you on a table. One of those is a high voltage power supply rated at 1000 volts, 2 amps. The other one is a high current power supply rated at 2 volts, 1000 amps. I'm going to tell you that one of those power supplies is safe to touch and one of them will fry you, right? You'll be dead if you touch the terminals of that one. Now if you touch the right power supply then you win a magnificent prize and if you touch the wrong one well then obviously you're dead. So which one would you choose? So I'm guessing that we've got about four different groups of people here. The first group of people will have said, well, I'm not really that familiar with electricity, but high voltage, that sounds dangerous, so I'm going to go with the second one. I'm going to touch the high current power supply. The second group of people are going to say, well, um, I've actually heard that it is the current and not the voltage that kills you, so I'm going to do the unexpected and touch the high voltage one. The third group of people is going to be the people who know how this works and got it right and who win the prize, congratulations. And the fourth group of people is the group of people who say, well, actually that prize is useless, my life is worth more than that, and who walked away from it. That's also a good choice, okay. But now let's see which one of those power supplies is actually safe to touch. So first of all, let's quickly remind ourselves of what voltage, current and resistance are, just very briefly. Current is the flow rate of electricity, so it refers to how many electrons uh, go through a certain area per second or per hour, you know, it doesn't really matter, per given amount of time. Then resistance is the ability of this area or this object to resist. Right, so the more resistance it has, the more difficult it is for the electrons to get through, and so the lower the current will be. So more resistance means less current. And then voltage, finally. Voltage refers to pressure. So voltage is the pressure, the electrical pressure that drives the electrons forward. The voltage is the reason why we get this current. Right, so if there is no voltage, the electrons will just stay where they are and there won't be any current. So the voltage is the pressure that is needed to drive these electrons through something. And the more voltage you have, right, the higher the voltage, the more current you'll get. Okay. Now all of this can be summed up into a little equation, a little formula that looks like this, where the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Right? Because we've just discussed that voltage when, when it's increased, it also increases the current, which is right, because it's above the division line. So when it increases, the outcome of the equation, which is the current, also increases. And we've also seen that resistance, when it increases, it decreases the current. And that's also right, because it's below the division line. So when, it's, when it gets larger, we divide by a larger number, so the current gets smaller. Okay. Now, we can apply this simple formula to both of these power supplies and find out which one kills you and which one doesn't. Let's apply it to the high current power supply first. High current power supply, as we've just discussed, is 2 volts at 1000 amps. So, that means our voltage is 2. And it's very tempting to fill in 1000 for the current, but that's not what we're going to do here because that's the maximum current that it could supply. That is the maximum current that this power supply can handle. But that's not the actual current that we're going to get because of this, okay? You're touching that power supply, or a person is touching that power supply, not specifically you. And that person is, is a human, right? And a human body has an electrical resistance of about a thousand ohms. A, a human doesn't conduct very well which means the resistance is going to be 1000 and so we get 2 volts divided by 1000 and therefore the current through their body will actually be 0.002 amps that's so low they will happily survive in fact 
they won't even feel anything. You won't even feel any like shock or anything like that. It's such a low current, it doesn't matter. So this power supply fools you because on the spec sheet it says 1000 amps, but that's the maximum it can do. Right? In this case, that's not what you get. That's not the current through your body. The other power supply, as you might have guessed, is the wrong option because that one supplies 1000 volts. So you get 1000 volts above the line and the resistance of the human body is still just 1000. So the outcome is one, like the current will be one amp through the person touching it. And that's rather deadly, so you'll be fried. So it's important to realize, and that's kind of the conclusion of this video, that indeed, current kills you. Current is the thing that is dangerous about electricity. But you can also argue that in order to generate a lethal current, you first need to apply a sufficient voltage, and therefore voltage is dangerous. And in this case, the voltage was the thing that was dangerous, because 1000 volts, that's enough pressure to generate a lethal current through a person, and 2 volts isn't. Luckily this was all just a thought experiment, so you're all still alive, congratulations. And also, if you chose the right one, that means you're not going to get this fantastic prize, I'm sorry. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.